Hello students, today we are going to study metals and non-metals. To start with, we all know that everything which is present around us is known as matter. Okay, and if we talk about the definition of matter, we can say that anything which occupies space and has got mass is known as matter. Okay, so let's write and just see what it is. Anything which is present around us is known as matter. And when we talk about definition, anything which occupies space and has got mass is called matter. Now when we talk about examples of matter, we all know everything like the chalks in my hand, this blackboard, this duster, everything is matter. Okay. Now this matter can be present in different forms. Now what are the different forms in which this matter can be present? Let's have a look. It can be in the form of elements or it can be in the form of the compounds or even it can be in the form of the mixtures. Okay, so now what we are saying that matter can be present in the form of the elements, compounds and mixtures. Now to begin with what do you mean by elements? What actually elements are? So we can say element is the purest form of the substance. What it is? It is purest form of any substance okay and secondly it is made up of of same kind of atoms okay same kind of atoms are present now to explain further, what does it mean by when I am saying elements are purest form of any substance and it is made up of same kind of atoms. Means what? If you take a such a big piece of element and suppose the structure of element is like this. Now suppose the atoms are like this. Okay. Now if you break this, if the this element is this big, if you break down into smaller smaller pieces then also there will be no change in the characteristic feature of the element atoms of that big piece or the smallest piece. And this is also what purest form of any substance that means only one kind of atoms are present in any element. Okay. Now what can be the examples of element? Actually in all there are 118 elements. There are in total 118 elements out of which 92 elements are natural. In total there are 118 elements out of which 92 elements are natural. Now out of this 92 natural elements 70 are metals and approx 22 are non-metals. Okay. Now, how do we know that this particular element is metals or non-metal? Okay. We can judge this on the basis of the characteristic features which we are going to study today. Before starting that characteristic feature, we will again uh, just have a look on the classification which was given by the scientist named Levasseur. So, what was his classification? He said elements can be divided into three categories like metals, 
non metals and one more that is metalloids so now elements can be divided into three categories metals non metals and metalloids now we are going to study totally about the physical properties of the metals just have a look about the physical property of the metals to begin with first we will talk about the physical state now this is the first property we are talking about and here i will be writing about the metals and definitely here about the non metals now first of all what is the meaning of a physical state physical state means and then i'm talking about an element that means an element is in con which condition which state that means whether it is in a solid state it is in a liquid state or it is in a gaseous form okay so this is the meaning of the physical state now when i'm talking about the metals physical state usually all the metals are in the solid form now i'm using the word usually okay now whenever we are reading physical properties of metals and non metals just keep one thing in mind that always will be having some exceptions okay so physical state of metals generally all are in solid form okay now the examples can be copper magnesium iron aluminium silver and many more now i'm talking up now this is the solid form natural at room temperature now when i talk about the exception that means which are the elements which are not present in the solid form so if we talk about that exception mercury and gallium mercury gallium are the metals which are present in the liquid form even in the room even at the room temperature okay now when we talk about non metals in non metals actually we can say that non metals are usually present in the form of the solid or gaseous form now when we talk about solid what can be the examples it can be sulfur it can be phosphorus it can be iodine okay now what is the gaseous form it can be hydrogen it can be oxygen it can be nitrogen okay now what is the exception over here the exception can be bromine now this bromine is present in the liquid form this bromine is present in which form it is present in a liquid form okay so this was our first property at present we are discussing about the physical state when we talk about the physical state of metals all the metals generally are solid at room temperature take the example of iron copper magnesium aluminum okay now when we talk about the exception that means which are the metals which are not in a solid state at room temperature so we can say mercury and gallium even cesium these are the metals which are present in the liquid state okay when we talk about non metals these are present in usually solid and gaseous state when we talk about the example of the solid the example can be sulfur i have written symbols over here so sulfur and phosphorus when we talk about gaseous state it can be hydrogen can be oxygen it can be nitrogen when we talk about exception so bromine is present in the liquid state now we are going to talk about the second property of the uh, we are going to discuss now second property now 
when we talk about the second property, the second thing comes in my mind is a shine. We all know that metals have a particular shine. You take the example of the gold, you take the example of the silver, you take the example of many metals and you can find that these metals shine in a different way. Okay? So this shine, this metallic shine is known as luster. So second point is luster. Now we have discussed physical state, now we are going to talk about the second property. When I think about the second property, the first thing which comes in my mind is luster. Okay? So it is luster. What is the meaning of luster? Luster means shine, a metallic shine which is present on almost all the metals but you know it is sometimes more for some metals and sometimes less for some metals see for example gold and sorry silver and gold is having a fabulous shine and that is the reason that silver and gold are used for making jewelries decorative pieces and so forth okay now when we talk about the, this I am talking about metals and here I will be and here I will be writing about non-metals. When we talk about luster and metals, sodium, this sodium and potassium has less luster. But you know why it is having less luster? Because a cover, a layer of oxide get deposited on these kind of metals. But if it is cut by the knife and a fresh part is removed, again we will see that even these metals have luster. Now non-metals are generally they are non luscious that means they do not have shine. It do not have shine. Again exception here is graphite. I am talking about exception. We can see that little shine can be seen on the graphite okay so now third is malleability first of all what is the meaning of malleability this is a very specific and special property of metals due to which when metals are beaten it get converted into a long thin sheets Take the example of a coin, if you take a or you have seen the bottles of the coca colas or thumbs up, remove that upper cover or the coin of that and try to hammer it. You will find that automatically it get converted into thinner sheet. Okay. What is happening? It is just it is nothing but the property of the metal of being beaten and again getting converted into sheets. Again if you take the example of the Indian sweets like rasgulla or kaju katli you might see you might have seen certain silver color layer is there on these kind of sweets. What is this layer? This layer is nothing but a small thin foil or cover or sheet of silver. Again when we talk about sheets talk take the example of the foil aluminum foil which is used for the packaging of food even for the picnics trips or even for the normal in normal also we pack our food in aluminum foil okay so what is malleability it is the property of metals to be converted into thin sheets when beaten. 
ok. So, what is malleability? We all have understood now, here we can take the example of aluminum, just now I told you we talk we have discussed about the aluminum foil, then again silver foil also ok. Now, when we talk about this property in non metals, non metals are generally non malleable ok, that means we cannot convert a non metal into a sheet. Just take the example of even wood, if I keep on hammering it, it is going to break into smaller pieces, but it would not be converted into a sheet ok. If I hammer this chalk ok, what will happen? It will just get broken into smaller and smaller pieces, but again it would not be converted into a sheet. So, what can I write in non metals? These are non malleable ok and again the examples can be what? You can take any example, may be plastic, may be wood, may be sulphur ok, may be iodine, may be bromine, it cannot be converted into sheets. Now, to talk about next property, again now we will talk about ductility. Now, what is the meaning of ductility? Ductility is a property where if the metals are beaten or like we can say it can be drawn into wires. Now, when we talk about wires, you might have seen long wires which is being used in the electric gadgets and even if you have seen embroidery fabric that means the fabric on which embroidery is being done. You will be surprised to know that from 1 gram of gold a 2 kilometer long thread can be made. Such a ductile gold is that means ductile is a capability of a metal by which it can be drawn into wires that means to make the wires from the metals ok. So, now what we are talking about? Now we are talking about fourth property which is ductility. Now, first of all I will write the definition of the ductility. What is ductility? Ductility means what? The capacity of the metals to be drawn into wires ok. okay. Now, it is the capacity of metals to be drawn into wires. So, when we talk about the examples just now we have discussed gold wires and the very big example is what the wires of the, the electric wires which are generally everybody has seen which are used in our houses ok. So, it can be made by copper, even aluminum wires are used ok. So, when we talk this was about what metals, now when we talk about non metals, I have written the metal property here only, now when we talk, talk about non metals these are like metals do not have ductile property that means these are non ductile. That means if I want to make <coughs> non metals I want to convert them into wires I would not be able to do this because met non metals do not have this property. Now to discuss with next is <coughs> good conductors of heat. Now, what is the meaning of good conductors? We are reading this thing or we know this thing from like we have read this in 6th standard also, 7th standard also that good conductors are what? What is the meaning of good conductors? Like it is the capacity to carry heat ok. That means, heat can move from one part to the another part. So, metals are very good conductors and that is the reason that we when we go and see in the kitchen 
we will find our pens, our pressure cooker are usually made up of what or we can say almost or every time it is made up of what metals. But just pay attention always this utensils will be made up of metals but when we talk about the handles handles are never made up of metals always it will be having a covering of non metals say for example of plastic sometimes maybe of the wood why it is made up of non metals because non metals are bad conductors of heat ok. So, what we are discussing we are discussing good conductors of heat all the metals are almost good conductors of heat. Now, what examples can I write over here I can write copper I can write even silver ok. Now, even I can write aluminum all these are good conductors of electricity or sorry heat. Now, when we talk about non metals all these are what bad conductors of heat. So, next property is conductors of electricity. Again I will be writing metals over here and non metals over here. Now, first of all what is the meaning of conductors of electricity. Now, we all know that we use electric wires at home for various gadgets various electric gadgets say fridge, TV, anything whatever camera or anything you talk about we always use certain electric wires. Now, how can we use electric wires why we are using electric wires because all metals are good conductors of electricity. Yeah, one thing is very true that few metals are very good conductors of electricity and in few it, it moves little bit slower. So, when we talk about the best conductor of electricity it is silver ok and metals are what all metals are very very good conductors ok. So, when we talk about silver it is the best conductor and after this is copper, but as we all know silver is very very costly and we cannot afford this silver to use in the electric wires at our home ok. And that is the reason in place of silver we usually go for aluminum ok. So, we use copper wires and aluminum wires in where in electric cables ok. So, just now what we have discussed we are talking about conductors of electricity all metals are very very good conductors of electricity again I am bringing this in your notice that metals are good conductors of electricity, but all metals do not conduct electricity at the same rate few are very good conductors few are little bit slower in this silver is the best conductor then copper, but as silver is very very costly we avoid using this and we use copper and aluminum wires. So, what I can write or what should I write over here I will write metals are good conductors of electricity ok. Now, when we talk about non metals what should I write I will write that these are bad conductors. ok metal non metals do not conduct electricity, but as we have discussed for everything we have got one or the other exception in the same way in non metals also we have got exception graphite, graphite is very good conductor ok it is very good conductor of electricity and that is the reason graphite is used in making electrodes ok. So, when we talk about conductors of electricity metals are good conductors non metals are bad conductors, but exception is graphite ok. Now, I will take next property of metals and non metals which is sonorous. Now, 
first of all what is the meaning of sonorous you know every metal has a specific sound a ringing sound see when you go to school you might have seen the bells uh, made up of metals have you ever seen a bell made up of wood only wood totally wood or a bell made up of a plastic no why because plastic or the wood do not have that capacity of ringing so what is sonorous sonorous is a capacity of capacity of metals to produce a ringing sound okay so now how what should i write in metals all metals have this cap sonorous property are sonorous are so sonorous property and this they do not produce a ringing sound okay so this do not produce a ringing sound and that is the reason all over wherever we see a bell it will be always made up of metals and not of the non metals now we will talk about the next property which is melting and boiling points okay now all the metals have very high melting and boiling points and you know knowingly or unknowingly this thing is there in your mind you all know this because just take the example of the iron can you melt iron you all have utensils at your home which are made up of metals when you keep these metals on the gas do these metals do these utensils get melted no it can't okay that is the reason we are using these utensils at home in various places we are using this why because metals have which kind of point it is having very high melting and boiling point high melting point as well as boiling point okay now when we talk about non metals they do not have such high and high melting and boiling point it is having very low melting point and boiling points say take the example of the plastic okay so plastic is what it is a non metal and it is having a low melting point and boiling points okay now when we talk about the next property we will discuss about the density first of all to clear up what is the meaning of density density is what density is mass per unit volume it is mass per unit volume okay or in the simpler way if i talk about then the atoms of metals are very closely packed are very closely packed these are very 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 closely packed and so it is become it becomes more denser okay it becomes more what denser so what is there we are discussing about the density what is the meaning of density density can be defined as mass per unit volume that means in a simple language the atoms of the metals are very closely packed very tightly packed okay so we can write in metals that density is very high but non metals have very low density but again remember about the exception when we talk about non metals carbon is a non metal which is a non metal but again it is having a very high density 
and even melting and boiling points of the carbon is very high. So, I can write here also exception and here also exception I will use this chalk to make it very uh, clear exception graphite or even diamond ok that means both are the forms of the carbon. Now, to discuss the next point I will talk about hardness. I am writing about metals here only and here I am writing about non-metals ok. Now, when I am saying that it is having very high density that means the atoms are very closely packed, very tightly packed, the melting points are high, the boiling points are high and so when we say the hardness, the stiffness metals are very very hard. Just imagine if I ask you to cut iron with a knife, can you? No you cannot, but again what is the exception? We have discussed it everything has got exceptions over here. So, when we talk about what let us say for example, sodium and potassium these are the softest metal which can be even cut with the help of a knife ok. So, first of all I will write hardness which metals are very very hard say copper hard metals ok metals are very hard and which metals are hard copper iron <coughs> magnesium all these are hard metals, but exception is what sodium and potassium are the very very soft metals and can be cut even with the help of the knife. Now, when we talk about non metals all the non metals are very very soft and brittle. Now, what is the meaning of brittle that means if you try to hammer it you try to put little force you apply force it will get broken into smaller pieces, but again exception exception is diamond. which we all know is the hardest substance which we have ever known ok. So, we have discussed the property hardness <coughs> all metals are very hard like copper, iron, magnesium again we have got some exceptions also like sodium and potassium are the metals which can be cut into pieces with the help of the knife. When we talk about non metals, non metals are very soft and brittle that means it can be cut into smaller pieces and it actually you know not cut into smaller pieces just get broken into smaller pieces even on applying a little amount of force, but again the exception is what diamond it is the hardest substance ever known for the human beings. So, what are the points which we have discussed? We have discussed many points like whatever we are discussing now all these are physical properties of metals and non metals you know, but we cannot distinguish metals and non metals even on the basis of the physical properties why because we are seeing that for everything we have got one or the other exception if we say ki whatever substance is very hard is metal. So, no again we have got exception ok if we say that whatever substance is soft is non metal. So, again we have got an exception diamond is the softest one. So, on the basis of the physical properties we cannot divide the uh, categories we cannot divide a substance into metals and non metals for that we need to read further, but to go to the before going before explaining the chemical properties we will discuss few things which were left behind like if you all remember we have discussed that elements can be divided into three metals, non metals and metalloids ok. So, we have discussed metals, we have discussed non metals now metalloids are left. Now, what is the meaning of metalloids? Metalloids are something which is having properties of both metals and non metals ok. So, what we are talking about? We are talking about metalloids 
Okay, how to define metalloids? Metalloids are something which shows the properties which shows the property which shows the property of metals as well as non metals. Okay, now what can be the examples of this? Examples arsenic, boron, silicon, germanium. Okay, so what is the meaning of metalloids? All those substances which show the properties of metals as well as non metals ok. Now, what can be the examples arsenic, boron, silicon, germanium ok. Now, few more things we have discussed before, before discussing metal like we I said that metal can exist in different forms say elements, compounds and mixtures. So, we have discussed everything about elements, but now what about compounds and what about mixtures. So, Compounds are how compounds are formed when elements combine in a fixed proportion. When elements combine in a fixed proportion, compounds are formed. Okay, and when then when elements or compounds they combine in indefinite proportion, then mixtures are formed. Thank you.